Morning. I just pulled it to this property. We're doing this landscape job and we discovered a big stump right underneath the grade, a tree stump that wasn't ground. So we're fixing it. And I'm just walking around, bro. It's a beautiful day. Look at it. Got nice tools everywhere. <laughs> and this job is to, there was a big mounded garden bed here and we we're, um, you know, obviously getting rid of it, resetting the grade so we can do topsoil grass seed, peat moss, and hay. Just turn it back into grass. And we found this big stump here. It looks like it's already uh, been ground down pretty good. Like, which we did with the stump grinder. And uh, demoing this garden bed. Got all this, oh nice, all this topsoil out of here. Replanted these hostas. We gotta finish trimming up this Bradford pear tree, trimming all these shrubs. Got to get black aluminum edging and we're deciding where we're going to make the edge come in at we're probably just going to come straight across here or tie it in with the sidewalk we'll figure it out and then uh let's see if the this was done back here there's a garden bed yep he got it yesterday this was a whole garden bed that the guys demoed and we're going to turn this back into grass Where's that sprinkler box they found? Oh, here it is. Okay, so I gotta notify the customer that we have found more sprinkler lines. This wood is all rotted, so we're just going to um, stop at Lowe's and get a sprinkler box housing for 25 bucks. Pop it down in there, clean it out first, and then now they'll have a new sprinkler box. So, I've been really thinking about this whole thing about mental health and running a your own service business and drugs, alcohol, depression, mental health, family issues. There's all these things that <clears throat> get in the way and can make somebody depressed and make them fail. And some of the most uh, successful people I know, either if they have depression, I don't know about it, or they're really good at managing their emotions, or they just have less emotions when it comes to becoming depressed or something. But, um, I was thinking about that. How do you continue to stay excited when you have everything against you or when your business isn't working or not growing at the speed that you were hoping it would grow? And I really think that that's one of the biggest things is the ability to stay excited. Um, who was it that said Su success is the ability to go from failure to failure with a great attitude? Think about that. And then I started thinking about the word attitude. And attitude is something that you can consciously choose. Because if you look at your emotions like a pendulum swing, sometimes you're feeling great and happy and even funny and silly because you're so happy, but then other times you're just in a dark place and highly depressed and just hanging on by the skin of your teeth <laughs> and just hoping for the pendulum to swing back so you can get back to happy again. And those times, it's like, how do you perform and function in those times? But the word attitude is like, you choose to have a good attitude. Say, so just because you're depressed, you don't treat other people meanly. Mean. You're not mean to other people. You're still courteous and polite and professional. And you find ways to get out of a slump, or at least not let yourself get there. Now, it's easier said than done, because there's a difference between just being in a slump and being full-blown depressed. I just came out of a, probably like a three week depression. I was super depressed. And I told myself I would never let myself get depressed ever again. After horrible depression, I went through like 2017. It was pretty bad, pretty bad. I was depressed for like four months. But then when you, when it happens to you and it sneaks up on you and next thing you know, when you are depressed, nope, nobody who's happy understands or cares what you're going through, they're just like, why are you depressed? Don't be depressed. I'm not depressed. How are you depressed? So you just don't tell anybody. And um, there's four things. Healthy eating, proper sleep, exercise. Wait, eat, sleep, exercise. Oh, hydration. Eat, sleep, exercise, lots of water. Make sure you continue to eat healthy, get proper sleep, 
exercise regularly and drink lots of water. Uh, I don't know the answer, but what's funny is I have a great friend who's a life coach. Um, I call him Rob. His name is Rob, but he, uh, Coach Rob. I've talked about him for years on my, on my videos, and I talked to him on the phone. I was like, bro, do you got a few minutes? I get on the phone with him, and I'm like, man, I've been really depressed for like three weeks, man. And I just like... And then he asked me a few questions, and he was able to go upstream because he's a conscious life coach and ask me a couple questions. He's like, oh, that thing that you're upset about, that's a fiction, or those things you're upset about, right? That's not even real. And, you're, and no matter how much energy you feel into something that's imagined to try to fix it, you can't fix a fiction. You have to objectify and realize that it is a fiction, and it's not even real, right? And... So you're worrying yourself to death over something that hasn't happened yet. There's fear, there's anxiety, and there's all these different uh, modalities, I guess, of anxiety. If you're causing yourself worry and anxiety over something that hasn't even happened, then, you know, for, for one thing for me is I am literally giving it all in my try, trying my hardest to build assets and uh, save away money, you know, stocks, bonds, precious metals. Uh, I want to maybe get into Airbnb and build assets that pay me residual income. And I want to be able to retire young and retire early, pay off my house, and be completely financially free. And so that, that pressure to do all that and be a guy who's a total family man at the same time and be a man of faith at the same time, to be able to balance all that, I believe that the only way you can do that is to put God first, then your family, then your business. But there's these seasons. How can I say this quickly without getting too deep? If you're doing something every day for money that you know how to do, you can just get in and do that thing. But if you want to grow or do different things that create your income and your career you have to learn how to do a bunch of stuff that you don't know how to do yet and lean into the direction of what you don't know which means you're probably not going to make a lot of money you're going to make a lot of mistakes there's going to be a lot of learning curve so it's going to take way more time so imagine if someone like worked a job and they want to get their business off the ground they would work their 40 to 50 hour a week job then they would go out after work and they would start their landscaping business and they would build the business at night and on the weekends until they could get to the point where they could cross the fulcrum and transition to their full-time landscaping business. Then when they transition into the full-time landscaping business, they probably are undercharging and they don't know what they're doing. So they're working and not making the money they should. So they have to work 70, 80, 90 hours just to get that thing established so they build the learning curve so they get to the point where they're established. And then if they want to grow, they got to keep doing that, right? So when you have, you're supposed to be, doing all the things like spending time with your family and all that at the same time, you're off balance. And then people will say, well, you need to spend time with your family and be in church and do all these different things. But who, uh, pay attention to who's saying that stuff to you. It's never somebody who's a really successful entrepreneur. Um, and, and of course you should do all that. But so this stuff drives me insane. It always has. So imagine if you were uh, in a job that you hated and you were trying to get your own landscape business off the ground and you're going out at night and on the weekends, but you weren't allowed to do that. Nope, you're only allowed to work 40 to 50 hours, so you're going to have to um, pull a rabbit out of a hat. So in the world that we live in, we only have 24 hours in a day. And um, I'm, I'm fascinated by how people become astronomically successful. And the, uh, Albert Einstein said the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over, ex expecting a different result. If you really think about that, say that to yourself. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. He said you have to rise to a new level, a higher level of consciousness in order to see the problem or the challenge differently and then try different approaches, correct? So... We get stuck in these schisms and these patterns. And then the pattern starts cycling and building energy like a knot, turns into a pathology, and then it becomes a neurosis. And the next thing you know, when you're hitting a brick wall over and over and over, eventually you might go through a period of depression. You're like, I'm running into this brick wall. I'm giving it everything I can. And it's not knocking down. Well, 
if you listen to uh, Jim Rohn, he tells the story of the ant. He said if an ant can't get through, if it's you know digging underground, and it comes up against an obstacle, and he can't go anywhere, the ant will literally dig over the obstacle until he can keep going. And if the ant can't dig over the obstacle, then he'll try a different approach, and the ant will literally dig around the obstacle. If he can't dig around the obstacle, he tries the other way. If that doesn't work, he literally digs underneath the obstacle until he can go. And if the ant can't dig over the obstacle, around it, or underneath it, the ant doesn't give up. The ant will literally begin to eat and dig through the obstacle. Directly through it. And it will not stop, I think, until the ant dies or something. like. So think about that. I think uh, if, you, if you read another book by Spencer Howard Johnson called, I think it's his name, Who Moved My Cheese? He talks about mouses or mice. If you put them in a maze and you got cheese, they'll go all the way around and they'll find the cheese. And they'll eat all the cheese. And when the cheese is gone, they look around. They wait a little while. And if there's no more cheese, they bounce. And they go back into the maze looking for more cheese. But human beings are much different. When we're in a maze and we're looking for cheese and we find it, we start eating the cheese, and then we get comfortable. And then when we run out of cheese, we look around, where's the cheese? Who took the cheese? And, the, and a human being will stay in the corner and keep banging his head against the wall until he dies saying, where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? But the, the really smart human beings... We'll go, there's no more cheese. Just like the, they'll be like mice and then they'll leave and they'll go find cheese somewhere else. So it's like when the opportunity dries up or something changes, like you have to be malleable, adaptable. And I'm obsessed with this stuff. I'm listening to this book right now by Patrick Bet David from Valuetainment called Your Next Five Moves on audible.com. <sighs> so good. One other thing is the last two years I've had the most success I've ever had in my whole life. I've um, I've been a keynote speaker on stages at different events around the country, where I've you know been the keynote speaker. I've crossed a hundred thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube and got my cool plaque that I put on the wall. I just had my ten-year wedding anniversary. I've been able to have two successful six-figure businesses and finally hit money in the bank that I always dreamed of having, and be able to do things like you know. Get a brand new truck, and um, and all the materialistic stuff is nowhere. I want to be. We all want to be multi-millionaires, right? But as it means, like I mean, like from growing up so freaking poor, I'm a guy with ADD and Tourette's, and I'm uh, if you meet me in person, I'm like always blinking and stuff. Like I definitely have like Tourette's or something. It's always been kind of embarrassing, but I don't do it on the videos for some reason. But what I mean is like from a kid who was totally poor, sleeping on couches and stuff, and I've lived in like 30 two homes yeah 32 homes and I've had like 34 jobs I've been fired from more jobs than I can even count I mean I, I made it out of the hole and I realized one thing all the, pe the people that say that having a little bit of success or becoming finally established where you're not terrified that you can't make your bills type stuff like you're you're, you're what's the word Man, the sun is cooking on me, and I need some water, bro. <sighs> Basically, if you're looking at somebody else who has anything that you don't have, and you think that their life is great, that's not true at all. True happiness and fulfillment come in the moment. You could be in the middle of a total struggle and be totally happy. You can be broke and be happy. Happiness is a state of mind. It's a, it's a state of consciousness that you can have at any time, and I think it's, it's mostly separated from anything material. If you like these talks, check out the Untrapped podcast uh, with Keith Kelfus on Spotify, Apple, anywhere you can. Just type in Untrapped podcast with Keith Kelfus, and you can listen to these talks and other talks. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you need a software for your business, go to getjobber.com slash Keith and get a free trial of Jobber. Ballard products, you can save 10%. I'll put a link in the description below. It'd be cool to share that stuff because it's right here. <laughs>
Anyways, I'm gonna drink my water and get the back to this. I had a guy call in today, and so I have to drop off the trailer and the tools. And I think I might work today. I realize after being out of the field for so many weeks that I actually love working. So when I have time, I'm showing up to the job sites and, and working, but then Actually, I don't know if I have time because I have to jump in the truck and email all these customers back and close these jobs. So maybe I work for a little bit and then I'll get back to that later. Hope you guys uh, crush it.